okay uh, so i will now be giving you uh, an example of uh, a tb problem uh, and compare it later to a uh, double reinforced beam problem okay so i have here a uh, a T-beam which is subjected to a positive bending moment meaning to say that the flanges are in compression and the units of, of the material properties and dimensions that are here they, uh, are consistent in terms of megapascal millimeter and millimeter square okay so uh, this is uh, a 400 megapascal 20 okay this is beta 1 is 0.85 because fc prime is less than 28 this is 400 okay by the way bf is the the flange width okay this is the total flange width BW is the web, okay, width. And TF is the flange thickness. Of course, uh, D is the effective uh, depth uh, as usual for a beam. And AS is... Uh, the area of steel in millimeter square, which is 2000 uh, millimeter square. Okay, so I, I made a step by step procedure for us for you as a guide. And uh, taking note that uh, the first thing we have to always to do when solving a beam problem is to locate the neutral axis, and we can do that by using equilibrium condition. So we all know for a fact that uh, if the depth of stress block A is less than the thickness of the flange TF, then okay, uh, the, the, the formula for the depth of the stress block becomes a simple rectangular beam problem. Okay, so we, we, we have to bear in mind, uh, okay, that this is a simple rectangular beam problem. Uh, this means that if my T-beam, okay, the depth of your, your stress block, let's say this is your depth of the stress block a okay is less than the thickness tf then you can consider this as only a rectangular beam problem because everything below the neutral axis becomes what It becomes uh, useless, okay? And of course, your your rectangular beam problem will involve a width, which is the width of the flange, and not the width of the web. So the width of the web is actually striken off here in our formula. So instead of B W, we are using B F instead of b w okay now upon checking your rectangular beam stress block depth we found out that it is 117.647 and this is greater than the thickness of the flange so our assumption that a is less than tf is wrong and therefore 
we have to correct the assumption. Okay, so we now look into the problem as a t-beam problem which has two compression areas of concrete. Okay, divided as shown. So this is now your okay, neutral axis. Okay, so our first area will actually be the depth of the stress block A multiplied by the VW while the other area is given by this overhanging flanges. Okay, so we have here a BW times the depth of the stress block. Okay, so we have now A and a TF with okay, what's this uh, distance here? This is B F minus B W. Okay, so they are actually symmetrical on both uh, sides. Okay, so let's put it to. Uh, Pf minus. Okay, so one half of this and one half of that becomes one whole. Okay, so this becomes Bf minus Bw. So that's how you you divide your your T beam. Okay. Now, for our first equation, we now divide it, as I have uh, uh, discussed earlier in the first video, we will be dividing it into a rectangular part with a depth A and another rectangular part with a depth TF. Okay, so this is now your uh, C2, C1, T2, and T1. Okay, so the first equilibrium condition is that the compression force of the overhanging flange, which is 0.85 F'C times the area. Okay, so this is now the first area of concrete in compression okay one is one bf dw times tf okay multiplied by the stress 0.85 fc prime must be equal to the as2 fy assuming assuming that the, the steel intention yields okay so that's fy and then for as uh, for the for this solution of as2 we simply cross uh, multiply or arrange it we get now a value of as2 equals 850 square millimeter of course this is just an assumption we will have to check it later okay so for your C1 and T1, this involves now this small area here, this green area, which is 0.85 Fc prime multiplied by the small area here is the area in compression number two, or sorry, number one. Uh, by the way, this is number two and this is number one. Okay, is equal to AS1 Fy. 
And AS1, we note that AS1 is simply AS minus AS2. So if we know AS2, we can solve for AS1. We simply subtract uh, AS, which is uh, 2000. I think that's given in the problem. There it is, so 2000. Minus 850 times Fy divided by 0.85 Fc prime BW. So you get a value of 139.294 pores. This is in millimeter. So A is greater than TF is a correct. Okay. Assumption now. So C. Can solve for C. A over beta 1. So this is 159.17. But we still have to check if still yields, really yields, okay? By the formula, 600D minus C over C. So this is 719.348. This is greater than 400 megapascal. Therefore, still yields in tension. You use Fs is equal to Fy as we have used it here. So we don't have any more problem because all the assumptions are consistent. So we solve for the moment capacity now. MN1 is simply okay, the overhanging flange. This is now your AS2 FY. This is your 0.85 F prime C. A, B, W. Uh, sorry, this is overhanging flange. So this is B, F minus B, W times T, F. Okay, so multiplied by the moment arm, which is D minus T, F over 2, which is this distance here thickness divided by two so you get the value there and then for mn2 so we have the depth of the stress block as computed earlier this is still 0.85 fc prime so this is a b w this is now your AS1 FY. Okay, so the moment arm is D minus A over 2. Because centroid of that is at A over 2. Okay, and you get this one here. You divide it by 10 to the 6 to get a kilonewton meter. So you add the two and multiply it by 0.90, you will get your final answer. Okay, so take note, this is the reduction factor phi. This is used for bending. So 0.90 of the the sum of MN1 and MN2 becomes 208.694 kilonewton meter. Okay? Now, for your ductility requirement, so take note. In a rectangular beam, the ductility requirement is used by simply using the formula rho BSR is 0 0.75 uh, okay Romax is 0 0.75 Rho BSR where Rho BSR is beta 1 over m 600 all over 600 
plus. Okay, take note. This is only for rectangular beam. This is no longer a rectangular beam. This is a T-beam. So we cannot use this formula. So we just go to the basic concept of ductility requirement using balance strain concept and solve for CB. Take note that CB is the same formula regardless of sh any shape you want. So all we need to do is to compare CB and your C maximum which is C all over 1.33. This is the factor of safety for ductility. And what is your C? C is the one that we uh, solved a while ago. So let's uh, look at it. What is C? C is 159.17 divided by 1.33. So you get 119.676. For as long as C max is less than CB, the beam will be ductile. Okay, always look at this comparison. Okay, so what's the reason? So again, for balance condition, you have this. Okay, it's epsilon S. Okay, for a ductile condition, you have this one your epsilon s this is equal to epsilon y so less than epsilon y this must be less than c maximum is less than c balance so that is the basis of this comparison okay so we, I have uh, shown you now the procedure on how to analyze a T-beam. And on the next video, we will do a double reinforced beam analysis uh, and compare. Try to compare uh, the results uh, of this uh, problem and the problem I'll be showing you on the next video. Thank you.